So you've arrived in Melbourne and you want to know what to do. Well, here are our top tips, starting off with this place. It's Federation Square in the heart of the city. Federation Square provides a snapshot of the diversity that typifies Melbourne and Victoria as a whole. It's here that locals and tourists mingle, grabbing something to eat and drink at the bars and restaurants. There are also great art galleries and plenty of free events and festivals. Start your trip at Federation Square and you'll instantly see why the city has a reputation for culture and sophistication. Now it's time for me to take a little journey. Melbourne's trams trundle around the city, adding a touch of charm to the roads. And not only that, it's a great way to get around. This is the City Circle tram that gives you a running commentary of places of interest en route. It can also see you land behind bars. Yes, just a short walk from Stop 7 is Melbourne Jail, and this is an absolute must. Built in 1858, it's where Australia's most notorious outlaw, Ned Kelly, was brought before his execution. He became a folk hero as he battled against the authorities, and here you can see how Ned and the other prisoners lived. Now, whilst me and my cellmate here try to launch a successful prison break, here's something altogether more suave. Yes, one of the best things to do in Melbourne is to take a tour of the laneways and arcades, where you can happily get lost for hours in the maze of bars, cafes, street art and boutiques. This particular area for me sort of describes the newness of what's happening in Melbourne. It was seen when I was young to be quite an expensive, exclusive city. That's still here, but there's a huge student and, and uh, innovative population that's moved into the city, living here as well. These are all apartments above us. And so you get locals and young uh, artists that are experimenting in a city that's liberal about how it allows these sorts of areas to arrive. Even for Australians, the uniqueness of the Melbourne experience is that it is small business and that it's tucked away in these back streets and down in basements and lofts and such, but also in a very condensed area. You're not having to jump from suburb to suburb to get the diversity that we have in the Melbourne city area. Fiona, with so many lanes, you must be constantly discovering new places. I'm certainly always finding new spots in the city in these laneways, but it's also the new innovative people that are doing handmade stuff, making use of vintage product, and they're all so hidden, which is always very exciting. Yeah. Now, after a day shopping, I feel like a coffee and a chill out by the beach, and I've got a great way of getting there. The Harley Davidson Tour of Melbourne lets you see the sights as you cruise on this awesome American legend. And it really is an absolute blast. Go on, Nick, put your foot down. One of the things that we find is that a lot of people can't imagine themselves actually getting on the back of a motorcycle. And it's not until they've actually been on the back of a bike that they realise that they should have done this years ago. Because when they get on the bike, they realise it's completely safe. They realise they can't fall off and uh, they realise that it's something that all their friends have been telling them but now they, they understand. A Harley Davidson ride is like walking at high speed and we take people around the city and they actually see more in, in a one hour, one hour with us than they would in three to, three to four days walking the same distance. People just don't realise how much more you can see from the back of a Harley Davidson compared to say going in a boring bus or in a taxi or something like that. I just can't imagine why somebody Now this is St Kilda, the place Melburnians come when they want some sea air mixed with style. There are dozens of fantastic cafes and cool shops in this picturesque beachside suburb. And when you get here, a visit to the eclectic Ackland Street is an absolute must. It's also home to Luna Park, where you can ride one of the world's oldest wooden roller coasters and many fine beaches. Kilda is a real treat. You can shop for treasures in the Sunday market or even rollerblade along the seafront. Whatever floats your boat, there's bound to be something for you. If you're a sports fan, Melbourne will seem like heaven. Not only is it home to the Australian Tennis Open, the Formula One Grand Prix and the Melbourne Cup, it's also home to this place, the Melbourne Cricket Ground or the MCG. 
The G, as the locals call it, sums up why Melbourne is Australia's sporting capital. It plays host to Melbourne's number one sporting passion, Aussie Rules Football, and it's also the traditional home of the Boxing Day Test Match, where every four years you can see England get beaten in the ashes. Visitors can take a tour of the MCG, and as well as seeing sporting memorabilia, you can also imagine what it would be like to be a world-class sportsman. Well, our tour runs for an hour and a quarter. We take people to the two places they really want to go, which is out onto the ground and into the space where we are now, which is the long room. But in conjunction with that, we tour through the dressing rooms, we tour through the players' um, viewing rooms. We have at the moment the Melbourne Cricket Club Museum, which has some absolutely beautiful pieces in it associated with the club and its history. It's almost endless when you, you start to look through the lists of sports that have been played here. But in the main, it's Australian rules football and, of course, cricket. Now, not many people know this, but I was once offered the chance to captain the England cricket team. Let's see if I've still got the magic. The MCG sits pretty much on the banks of the Yarra River, which flows straight through the heart of Melbourne to this place, the fabulous South Bank. The area has undergone an incredible transformation in the last decade. The kilometre stretch is home to alfresco dining, art centres, great hotels and shopping. If you want to get a really good view of the South Bank and Melbourne, it's worth getting some altitude. The Eureka Tower is the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere, and this is the observation deck, 285 metres up. Uh, we're currently standing at the moment 285 metres, which is the highest vantage point currently in the Southern Hemisphere. We have the quickest lifts in the Southern Hemisphere at 37 seconds, 9 metres a second. Your ears do pop twice, sometimes three times. Um, the amount of visitors that we get is just phenomenal. Our technology with the scrolling LEDs on the floor, our lighting, our soundscapes with different sounds of Melbourne is just absolutely first in the world and it's absolutely amazing. But if you want a bit more of an adrenaline blast, then you're in luck. Edge is a glass cube sticking three metres out from the building with you in it. And when you're in here, this is what you'll see. Wow, well, this is plenty high enough for me, but if you have a real love of the clouds, you're in luck. Learning in Melbourne is actually quite a, uh, an unusual product because flying through a major city like we do, um, there's very few places in the world that you can actually do that, so the feedback is fantastic. And uh, of course you've got that great kind of map light -like look of the city where you look down and you can gaze upon the kind of city coming to life and the buildings from, a, from an overhead perspective. And it's, it's one of those things that people you know, really enjoy. This is perhaps the best way to see the city. Hundreds of feet in the air, and it's the last of our top things to do. Now, what you've seen is just the tip of the iceberg. And if you come to Melbourne, you'll have your own unique experiences, and you're going to want to come back for more.